Okay, so again, we are starting to do some example problems um, of just random geometric proofs, and these, these proof, series of proofs are going to involve all involve angles. Uh, most of them will also involve parallel lines, but I decided to focus more on the topic of angles when describing them. Um, I have included the, the Common Core Standard on there that tells us why it's so important to look at um, lines and angles uh, and to prove theorems about those. So, we start by um, giving our conditional statement. If uh, ang line A is parallel to line B and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then show uh, line L is parallel to line M. So what usually, and I'm going to do these all as column proofs. You may, you may be doing paragraph proofs or some other form of a proof, but I'm going to do them as a parallel, uh, paragraph proof. And we always start with statements and reasons. And we always want to start by give, you know, listing out what are the things that we're just given straight away. And you're given two things. Um, and the given statement is always the if part or the hypothesis of a conditional. So we're going to do A parallel to B and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And that just is our given statement. Now we need to look at those and say what do those tell us and what, we're what are we trying to prove? Well, we're trying to prove that this line is parallel to uh, that line. So L is parallel to M. Well, to do that, then we've got to find a relationship between um, two angles, one angle that's on line L and one angle that's on, on line M, and then they also have to share a transversal. So, for instance, we could find a relationship between 1 and 4. 1 and 4 uh, are corresponding angles, and they are um, uh, both on line B, and one's on L, and one's on M. And if we know the corresponding, that converse of the corresponding angles postulate that says if two ang corresponding angles are congruent, then um, the lines are parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and take that tact, and then I'll explain afterwards a couple other ways you could have done this proof. Okay, so since line A is parallel to line B, that tells us things about um, uh, either this set of angles with this set of angles or this set of angles with this set of angles. And because I decided to use line um, 1 and 4, I'm going to go ahead and, and work over there on line M instead of on line L. And I already have 1 connected to 2, and I want to connect um, 1, and 4 to, or, yeah, 1 and 4 together, so I need to try to connect 2 with 4. Well, it's actually very easy to do because 4 and 2 are what we call alternate interior angles, and so we can actually go ahead and claim that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And, and that's very nice because that's gonna, we can do that because alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, your teacher uh, may require you to uh, say if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent, which is actually what the theorem says. But for my class, it's okay just to write alternate interior angles are congruent. Uh, we assume that we have to know lines are parallel for that to be the case. Okay, now the great thing about this is it allows us to do that ever so important property, the transitive property, which will allow us to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And that's because both of them are congruent to angle 2, and if two angles are congruent to the same angle by the transitive property, the two, line, the two angles are congruent. And so that's the transitive property. Um, and remember, whenever we say transitive property, we've got to say what is it of, and in this case it's of congruence. Now that's really good because if 1 is congruent to 4, then I can now claim L is parallel to M. And the reason I can claim that is because 1 and 4 are corresponding angles. And the converse of the corresponding angles postulate says that if two um, lines, or two corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines uh, are parallel. So the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. And that's enough to finish this proof. Now, there were a couple other ways you could have done it. You could have done something like shown 6 um, and 2 are congruent and use the converse of the alternate interior angles um, theorem. And that would have do been done in a similar way, except you step 2 would have been 1 congruent to 6 by corresponding angles. Um, there, you might have also decided that you wanted to show um, uh, that um, 6 and 7 were supplementary, 
Well, you could have done that by showing 2 and 7 are supplementary and then doing a substitution for 1 and for 2, uh, or then showing that 1 and 6 are congruent and then su doing some substitutions to show that 6 and 7 are supplementary, and that would be the converse of the same side interior angle postulate. Whatever the case, there are often multiple ways to solve these proofs. I've shown you what's probably the shortest way to do this one, but there clearly were other ways you could have gotten to your answer.